Hello and welcome to Chandler Science, AP Physics 1, Free Fall and Projectile Motion. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about objects in free fall that are falling towards the Earth or the Moon or whatever planet you might be on, and then projectile motion, so objects that are launched at different angles and going through two-dimensional motion instead of just one-dimensional motion. We'll look at problems with those and how to graph them and different stuff like that. So let's go ahead and dive in. Don't forget, if you're one of my students, you are taking your notes and you're going to ask one question on the Schoology discussion forums and then you're going to answer someone else's question on the forums as well. Uh, without further ado, let's dive in. All right, everyone, so let's talk about free fall. First, let's define what free fall is. You see here our definition, an object's motion is in free fall when it is under the effects of the force of gravity and no other force is acting on it. So if we ignore air resistance, which we are going to do in this class for 99.9% .9 of all problems, the only time you'll need to worry about air resistance is if a problem specifically tells you that you need to worry about it, right? Which just doesn't ha not happen very often. Um, so if we ignore the air resistance, kick a football, kick a soccer ball, throw a tennis ball, throw an airplane, airplane, whatever, like anything like that at all, uh, those objects are in free fall, right? The moment you let go of a ball, whether you're kicking it or throwing it or hitting it with a bat, the moment you are no longer in contact with that ball, it's in the air and it's just gravity pulling it down, right? It is considered being free fall, whether it's going straight up, straight down, left, right, doesn't matter, it's in free fall, all right? Um, so now that we have that defined, let's talk about uh, this picture down here. So what I, oops, what I want to do is I have this table and I got this picture on the left, you see basically a motion diagram, right, of a ball or some object going up in the air, stopping and then coming back down, right? And I want to, and you'll see this is t equals zero at the very beginning, so this is t zero, this is t one, t two at the top, t three, t four, and this is t equals five seconds down here. All right, so what I want to do is fill in this table all this information about this object that's in free fall, and I think doing this will really help us understand kind of the nature of the motion, uh, the free fall, all right? So let's do that. Um, and it's kind of hard to know where to start, but there's a special thing that happens at the peak of the object's motion right here. Now you've all heard the expression, what goes up must come down, unless you can get into orbit. But anyway, uh, if, it, if a ball is on its way up, you throw a ball straight up in the air, up it goes, slows down, gets to the top and then it falls back down. But at the very top, right, what happens? Well, for an instant, it stops before it falls, right? For like a moment of time. Uh, so I'm gonna put at t equals two, right? That's when I'm at the peak there. I'm gonna put zero for speed and velocity. The only, remember the only difference between speed and velocity is direction. So we'll have to put a positive and negative sign for velocity when on its way up, we consider up positive and then down is negative, right? Okay. so. Now we have that filled in, cool. We can also put position of zero at t equals zero since we are defining what the origin is, right? Remember, we get to decide that. So we're saying, well, wherever he, the person lets go of the ball, the moment it leaves their hand, right? That's what we're calling the zero position, right? Now, a lot of students want to say, well, why can't we put in the velocity here of, of how fast it is the ball? We, we don't know, right? You are giving an object velocity when you throw it. But once you let go of that ball we or object, we don't know what the speed is. So we don't know, we can't fill in these spots here and here yet because we don't know what they are. Uh, we don't know how fast the person threw the ball, okay? But we can figure it out. Now, in order to move on, we have to talk about the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is called little g and it is defined as 10 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth or near the Earth's surface. A lot of students want to say gravity is 10. Don't say gravity is 10. That makes you sound like a person who isn't taking physics, okay? You say the acceleration due to the force of gravity is 10 meters per second squared on or near the Earth's surface. Now, the reason I say on or near the Earth's surface is because if you go up in the orbit way far away from the Earth, like what the ISS is, it's not 10 because you're really far away, far away from the Earth, right? So it gets a little smaller. Um, but on or near the surface, it's 10. Now, we define it as positive 10, even though it kind of goes down, and we said that was negative, but that's just kind of how we define little g. When we plug little g into the formulas for the A acceleration, which we'll see in a minute, so don't freak out, uh, then we'll make it negative, but um, it's defined as absolute value of just 10. So g is 10, um, little g. All right, so anywhere on the Earth, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So if that 
uh, is the case, well, then we know that uh, we can fill in the velocity chart the rest of the way, right? If, it, if the velocity here is zero, then what's my velocity one second later on the way down? Remember what acceleration means. Acceleration is saying that uh, it's a change in velocity over time. Well, the change in velocity, acceleration due to gravity, is 10 every second. That means my velocity changes by 10 meters a second every second. So if I'm at zero and I start to fall down, one second later, my velocity is 10. But all the way down, right, so that means it's negative. So it's going to be negative 10 here at t equals 3. And of course, speed has no direction. It's scalar, so I just put a 10 in. And then I'll, one second after that, I'm at negative 20, and then 20 here for speed, because there's no direction. And then one second after that, I'm at negative 30. So it's changing by 10 every second, right? Now we can also work our way backwards, like this way. What must the velocity have been? Uh, let me fill this over here. Negative 10, the velocity here is negative 20, and the velocity here is negative 30. What must the velocity have been at t equals one second if one second after that it was at zero? Hopefully you got it, it's positive 10 now, right? Because again, if my velocity is positive 10 and I'm slowing down by 10 every second, then one second later, it'll be zero. And then one second after that, or one second before that rather, it must've been 20. So now we know that this person threw the object up in the air with a speed or a velocity of 20 meters per second. Now, let's go to the acceleration column. It's pretty easy. Um, the acceleration in this entire column is neg or, yeah, negative 10. And a lot of students think, or sometimes I'll ask students, um, what is the velocity of the object at the peak here, right? And students will say, oh, it's zero at the peak. And I'll say, yes, very good. The vertical velocity is zero. And then I'll ask them, well, what about the acceleration at the peak? And students often want to say, oh, isn't it zero also? No. Think about what that would mean. That would mean that your gravity just stops. Like, remember, it's the acceleration is due to gravity, right? Well, gravity doesn't just turn off willy-nilly. So the acceleration is always negative 10 for any object that's in free fall, at least on the Earth, OK? Um, so keep that in mind. Now let's go to the position. Position, all right. So we define the initial or origin to be zero here when the person let go of the ball, right? The moment it left their hand. So um, we call that position zero. One second later, so right, uh, let me erase this stuff so we can see better. One second later, there we go. Right here, what is my position? X equals what? All right, well, um, it's gonna be 15. So why is it 15? That's because my average velocity between the moment I let go of the ball and the moment the ball gets to here is 15. It's not 20, right? Remember, this ball is not going at a constant velocity. We cannot use the expression delta x equals vt because, I, as I said in class many times, this expression is only useful if you are moving at a constant velocity. But our velocity isn't constant, is it? It's slowing down because of the acceleration due to gravity. Um, so my initial velocity is 20 plus the velocity at the end of the first second is 10. So here's an equation for to find average velocity. Average velocity, or v bar, or v hat, I, uh, it's called v hat because it kind of kind of sounds fun, is v naught plus v final over two. That'll give you the average velocity. So you can use that to then uh, multiply that by the, by the time, plug that in up here, and that'll work to find the displacement. So uh, 15 times one second, since that's the elapsed time, right, is 15. So that's the position that we go up in meters. You could also, if you don't like that, if that's confusing or something, you don't like it that way, do this way, x delta x equals v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. Of course, a will be negative 10. Again, the g is defined as positive 10, but when you plug it into the equation for the acceleration value, it becomes negative. So a will be negative 10. T is 1 here, right? Because we're going, the elapsed time is from 0 to 1 second. So uh, t will be 1. My initial velocity will be a positive 20 because that's uh, how fast I, I let go of the ball, right? And then you plug all that in, I promise you'll get 15. All right? And if you don't, you messed up. So I'll do it again. Um, eh, we can do it real quick, right? Why not? Okay, so delta x equals v is, okay, so it's 20, right? 20 times 1. And it's going to be, oops, it's going to be a minus, right? Because we are, uh, acceleration of gravity is negative. So it's be minus, see t is one, one squared is one, a is negative 10. So negative 10 times one times a half is all that comes to be five. Well, delta x equals 
20 minus 5, which is 15. All right, told you. Okay, uh, moving on. Next thing, again, so let's do average velocity from 10 to 0. Well, 10 plus 0 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So my average velocity is 5 um, for one second. So I go 5 more meters of the 20, right? So my position here was 15. Now my position x is 20, right? 5 more meters. I don't mean I go 20 more meters. I go 5 more from 15 up 5 to 20. Now on the way down, I want you to notice how it's kind of like a mirror image, at least this top part here, right? This, These two parts are kind of in the same position, right? Which makes sense. Now I'm on my way down, so my average velocity is f down 5 down five, or negative 5, so I go back down to 15, and then I'm at 0 again. And that last step, my initial velocity at the beginning of this second was 20, or negative 20, and then at the end of this uh, second, it's negative 30. So I add those two up, get negative 50, divided by 2 is tw negative 25. So I'm, my average velocity for this last one second is negative 25. So I go my last my final position is negative 25 meters. Uh, you might think it's weird to have a negative position, but remember we defined the origin or the initial uh, zero position as where I let go of the ball. But since the ball fell down past my hand to the ground below, I can have a negative position. That's no problem. So there you go. There is our chart filled in. I uh, hope that makes sense. If not, then shoot me an email uh, or ask on mine or post a question into the uh, Schoology discussion. All right, let's do. Let's move on to the next slide, and we'll talk more about freefall. All right, again, let's talk more about projectile motion and freefall. I mentioned before how we have these equations that the AP College Board gives us, and I want to mention again what this little x is all about. This little x here, and that x there. Right? I, I said this in the last video, but I'll say it again. Uh, that x does not mean in the x plane necessarily. It just means make sure you have that velocity and that acceleration example the one I circled, or if you're using this bottom equation, that velocity and that velocity and that acceleration, they must all be in the same plane. So we can totally use these equations for the vertical plane. We just got to make sure that if we launch the ball, say, for example, at an angle like that, right, that uh, when we talk about its horizontal component of velocity and its vertical component of velocity, we can't plug in its horizontal component, you know, into there and then talk about its vertical acceleration with that guy. It don't work that way, all right? Everything has got to be in the same plane, okay? You can't have things in one plane in the same equation and there's an X plane and the Y plane, right? So don't think that X means must be this way. It just means keep it all the same together, either all vertical plane or all horizontal plane, okay? All right, so now that we've kind of got out of the way, let's talk about the stuff. So when you have an object that is launched, kicked, thrown, batted, whatever, shot from a bow or a gun at an angle, like the one I just drew, right? We must break it down into components. It's vertical and horizontal components. I'm gonna do that by drawing a little dotted line. So if I throw this ball at an angle, say I throw it at 30 degree angle, so I'm gonna write down here 30 degrees, I'm gonna have a horizontal component of velocity and a vertical component of velocity. Now it's very important to understand that its horizontal component of velocity is constant. It does not change. There is no force once you let go of the ball, once you kick it, hit it, shoot it, whatever, there is no longer a force acting on that ball in the horizontal plane, right? It's, it, there isn't, okay? Again, accept air resistance, but we are ignoring air resistance. So that if there is no force acting on the ball, there's nothing to push it to speed it up or to pull it and slow it down. Therefore, the velocity horizontally is constant. However, you notice a little x here. I am using that to represent horizontal plane here. V y, the vertical. This V y there, and this is V x here, is not constant. Okay, because what we know is affecting the ball in the vertical plane, gravity, right? Gravity is pulling the ball down, so it is accelerating down towards the Earth at a negative 10 meters second squared because of gravity. So it is not constant. So uh, we can totally use our shortcut equation of delta x equals vt for the horizontal, but we sure as heck cannot use that for the vertical, it will not work because this is only good for constant velocity. Um, but we have to use the rest of these equations that include acceleration for the vertical uh, component, right? So let's look a little more at how this works. Um, 
let's do a quick little problem. Let's say I'm going to shoot a ball, and I'm only going to do one problem like this, and then we'll do more problems later uh, in the next video, more complicated problems. So let's do I shoot a ball, and again, let's say its angle is 30 degrees. I got to break it down in components. Like there's really no way to solve this without breaking down components. I'll show you how this works and verticalize. So I say angle is 30 degrees. And let's say that its total velocity that I shoot the ball, uh, let's say it's a bow and arrow, whatever, I don't care, it doesn't matter, is also 30 meters per second. So I pull the bow back and I release the bow and arrow and it goes at a 30 degree angle. And I want to know, hey, how far does the ball, how far does the bow travel? Um, you know, what's the speed of the bow when it's the ground? I want all the stuff about the bow, right? Or the arrow, whatever. I don't know how to shoot the bow and arrow. All right, so I'm going to kind of draw a picture here. It's going to go up at an angle, and then it's going to fall down. It's going to go like parabolic motion, right? All right, so I want to know how far does it go, what's the speed. Let's say what's the speed at the top and, and, and all the things, right? All right, so whenever I have a problem like this, it's we are now in two-dimensional motion, right? Not only is object going left and to, from left to right, it's also going vertically up and down, right? It's going to go up and then come back down, and it's going left to right the whole time also. I think my left and right is opposite because of the camera, but you get the idea, okay? Um, all right, let's talk about the vertical components first. I'm gonna erase this stuff at the top of the screen because I'm assuming you already wrote that down or you understand it, all right? Let's talk about the vertical stuff first. All right, the first step to do in any problem like this is to find my initial velocity in the vertical direction. V for velocity, Y for vertical plane, the Y plane, right? And then the little naught symbols, this zero for initial. And I also need to find my horizontal initial velocity, but we'll do that in a minute. Let's focus on the vertical first. How do I know what that is? Sokotoa is your best friend. This is a right triangle, isn't it? No, this is the right triangle. So if I know my, ang uh, my uh, hypotenuse and I know the angle, I can use uh, Sokotoa, Sokotoa. All right, I'm going to go and use uh, sine of my angle equals opposite, which is my, notice how the uh, vertical component here, this component here is opposite the angle that I have defined, right? Uh, so I'm gonna, I can use, that's my opposite. So this is V Y naught. So instead of opposite, I'm putting in V Y naught because that's the opposite of the triangle over the hypotenuse, which is a 30 meters per second, right? You with me? Now the angle was 30, so I know sine 30 degrees equals V Y naught over 30. Now the sine of 30, I'm pretty sure is a half, but make sure you're in degree mode also when you do this. You're not in degree mode, you're in, you're in big doo-doo. Pretty sure it's a half. Yep, it's a half. All right, sine of 30 is a half. So sine of 30 is a half, so I have 0.5 equals V why not over 30 I can times 30 both sides this will cancel 30 times a half is 15 so I get 15 equals V Y not so I know now that this is 30 sorry 15 sorry I don't know why I 30 15 meters per second vertical direction okay what about horizontal well, for horizontal I'm gonna use cosine so now let's find uh, the, co the uh, initial horizontal velocity of the object. Um, so cosine of my angle, again, is 30, equals now adjacent. Now, notice how this side of the triangle here is adjacent or touching that angle that I have defined. So that's my adjacent, that's Vx naught over the hypotenuse, which is 30 again. Now the cosine of 30 is not half, but it is 0.87. So this is 0.87 equals vx naught over 30 I times 30 both sides times 30 both sides and then I cancel that 30 so I get that times 30 is 26 or 25.9 on 26 so my vx naught oops is 26 alright per second alright okay Step one done. I'm going to erase this, so you can always pause, go back, rewind, and you see it again. Okay, when I need to erase, make more room, because I don't want to go to the next slide quite yet. All right, now we got that done. Now the next thing is figure out how long is this thing in the air? Here's the key, guys. 
that horizontal velocity, that's what determines how far this thing goes horizontally, right? The primary question you're gonna get is how far does this thing go or how long is it in the air? The horizontal velocity is what determines how far this thing gets. I wanna draw vector components along the way here, let you understand what's happening to this object, okay? We'll go back to different color, back to orange here. All right, initially I have a high, big, long arrow, right? Because my initial velocity was 20, uh, my horizontal initial velocity was 26. My vertical velocity was also fairly large at about 15, although not quite as big as the horizontal, right? Now what happens if I want to draw the components of my velocity a few seconds later, say right here? Well, my horizontal velocity doesn't change, right? It is constant. It's still 26. However, my vertical velocity is going to get a lot smaller because what's slowing me down? Gravity pulling me down, right? So it's going to be a little smaller. Now at the peak right here, I have only horizontal velocity. And guess what? It's still 26. I have no vertical velocity here at all because what happens at the peak? It stops momentarily for an instant. But my horizontal velocity does not stop. Only vertical velocity stops at the peak, right? And then on the way back down, what happens? Well, my horizontal velocity is constant, doesn't change, still 26. But now my vertical velocity is going down, speeding up in the downward direction. And then the moment I hit the ground, I have a large horizontal velocity and a large vertical velocity. Do you see how it's a mirror image of itself? On the one way, it's going up. On the other side, it's, but it's going down. But you see how the, everything looks the same. If I find out the numbers on this side, I know the numbers on the other side, with the only exception of I flip the vertical component. So this, instead of being positive 15 on the left, it's a negative 15 on, on the right-hand side, right? Because it's going down now. So guess what my total combined or resultant velocity is on this side? What my, what's my, uh, I'm gonna add these tail to tip, don't I? Tail to tip. This is negative 15. So my resultant velocity here is 30, right? Because wasn't it 30 on this side when I launched the ball? So that's 30 over here also. So the speed when I launch the ball and the speed when I land is exactly the same. Now that's only true if you if the ball is launched and the ball lands at the same positions. If you launch a ball from a high position and it lands below, the velocities will not be the same in the launches and land, or vice versa. If I launch it below and it lands up high, the launch velocity and the uh, final velocity will not be the same. But if you launch and land at the same height, then they're the same velocity, just like in this problem. Okay. All right. So the question is, how far does the ball get? In order to find that, look at my equation up here uh, the, that I have up here still. Delta x equals vt. The the horizontal velocity is what's going to determine how far the ball travels horizontally, right? So I already know what V is, okay? V is 26 equals delta X. I'm looking for delta X. I got to find T. So how long is the ball in the air? Well, the vertical velocity is what kind of controls how long the ball is in the air for, right? Um, so we got to find out how long the ball is in the air. So let's, let's do that. So we're going to use there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to show you the shortcut way first. I think it's easier, right? Um, we're going to use this equation right here to do that. It's key to take to notice that the um, mirror image of this thing, right? So we're actually going to solve for how long it takes the ball to get to here. How long does it take the ball to get to the peak? Well, again, I, ignore the x's, right? Let's pretend the x's are y's. Remember I said before, as long as you're in the same plane, it doesn't matter. So we're going to say this is vy equals vy naught plus ayt, right? Okay, so what's my initial vertical velocity? Well, wasn't it 15, right? Vertical velocity only. What's my final vertical velocity at this position right here? I am defining that as my final position for this part of the problem. It was zero, we said. And what's acceleration due to gravity? Negative 10, and then times t, we don't know, we're looking for t, right? All right, well, we're gonna add the 10t over here, so it's gonna be 10t, now it's positive, equals 15. I divide by 10 both sides, and I get t equals 15 over 10, which is 1.5 seconds. So it took 1.5 seconds to go from here 
to here. This is 1.5 seconds. Well, guess how long it's going to take to do the other part. You guessed it, 1.5 seconds. So the total time that we add it all up is three seconds, right? So now I can plug in a three over here. Three seconds, delta x is 26 times three. which is 78 meters. So this ball was in the air for three seconds and it traveled a total distance of 78 meters horizontally along the ground. All right, that was a lot to take in. I suggest you watch this over multiple times, follow each step, it's a lot. We're gonna do more complicated projectile motion problems later, but this is the basic. I wanna now I wanna quickly show you the non-shortcut way because you might have to use it sometimes to solve for T, all right? So I wanna erase this. Now let's do the non-shortcut way. Let's say you had a problem where, uh, again, this, that, that shortcut way only works if your landing position is the same as your launch position, right? But what if you are, let's say that with this ball lands up on a cliff. So I'm gonna erase this for a second. Do, 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 watching me erase is fun, okay. And let's say it lands right here. Let's say there's a cliff up here and the ball makes it onto this cliff. And so the launch position and the landing position are not the same. Ooh, then how long is it in the air for? This is why you have to use this equation right here, the one I'm drawing an arrow at right now. All right, how to use that guy, okay? You have got to know how to use a quadratic formula, which is t equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root a b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. All right, so what, you see Chandler's lost his mind. All right, no, I haven't, but here's, here's the deal. That equation, delta x in the y direction, right, equals v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. Now we're gonna plug in our numbers. Now, look at, um, I need to. Know, I do need to know how high the cliff is. If I don't, I'm not, I need to be either given that or something. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to know. Let's just say it's a 10 meter high cliff. So it's a 10 meter high cliff. All right, from there to there. All right. So what is my change in position? 10, right? So I'm going to subtract the 10 over here. So this is going to be zero equals. All right, uh, one half a. Well, a was negative 10, right? Half that's negative 5. T squared plus 15 t, because that was my initial vertical velocity, minus 10, because my change in position is, oh sorry, it's not, yeah, is, is, I had to subtract it on this side, so uh, was, my change in position is 10, but I subtracted it from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation, so now it's negative 10. So here's my setup for the quadratic, right? It's my a term, my b term, and my c term. So there's your b, b term is 15, my a term is negative 5, my c term is negative 10. All right, so you need to be able to plug that in and solve. All right, now I'm not gonna do it right now. I want you to do it on your own at home and get, and get the answer and bring it to me and show me if you have a question over you're not sure. But this is imperative. You must know how to do this, okay? All right, lots to take in. Um, that's the basics of projectile motion and free fall. Um, that's it for now. I'm gonna do another video right now uh, to do some practice problems, just to kind of dive more into this, so no more lecturing in the notes and kind of that stuff. I'm going to do strictly problems, all right? So any questions over this, uh, email me, shoot me a text on Remind, you know the drill. Um, don't forget to post your question on the Schoology discussion, a minimum of one. You got more than one, hey, ask one to one, no problem. And you also need to answer one question. So hope you learned a lot. It's a lot to take in. I realize that, but do your best. Um, and then, um, you know, again, ask me questions anytime you, you need to in class or outside of class. All right, guys, have a great day and a great weekend, and I'll see you in class on Monday. Um, I love you guys, and don't forget, I have no life. You are my life, so I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.